Today we're going to look at the playlist and in particular from the perspective of those people making the switch from blocks to clips. Before we get into the details, I'd like to show you some handy navigation hints in the playlist. You may have noticed the zoom scroll bar along the top. Rather than yanking on that, which is going to give you a headache and make you dizzy, use the key shortcuts. I'm currently holding the control key and then right click on the mouse button to zoom out to full view. This is a great way of quickly moving about in the playlist, particularly when you need to work at high zoom levels. For example, hold control, then right click and drag on the selection to zoom into this focal and we're there. So if you want to go to the right, rather than scrolling along for small distances, click the middle mouse button or wheel and drag. For larger distances, control right click to zoom out, then make your selection and zoom back in again. So for example, these notes here. Zoom in a bit more. Let's pick something else, uh, this automation. So as you can see, it's very efficient and avoids the need to scroll. Let's get back to clips. I'll start by cleaning this project. Control A to select all, hit the delete key. It's all gone. When you have a blank playlist and want to add a clip, the easiest way is to use this clip selector here. The clips are sorted according to type. Here's the audio clips, automation clips, and pattern clips. So if we want Gillian singing back, select it from the menu and add it to the playlist by left clicking. I'll put it on the girl track. And there's Gillian singing. In the sea of night where my soul is real. Let's put some drums in. Let the darkness heal and the dream of life will surely reside. And some automation. I can hear your heart. I can before we move on, I should point out another quick clip selection method. That's to left click the content that's already visible in the playlist. So click here to duplicate the vocal. Left click on drums. Left click on the automation, and it's simple as that. What a mess. Let me fix that. Back to where we were, the clip selector. If you're going to have a lot of clips in your projects, this can get quite long and a bit confusing. So there's another way. You can right click the clip type focus selector. Its main purpose is to focus clip types when they're stacked. For example, to focus on the audio, click the audio tab and get access to the audio. Automation, and we're moving the automation. And finally pattern, and we're moving the drum notes. However, you can also right click these to see the clip types. which is the same information shown here, but in shorter lists, sorted according to type. Okay, with all that navigation and editing out of the way, let's look at making the switch from blocks to clips. So how do old projects open in the new playlist? I've been using FL Studio since 2002, so I've dug up one of my earliest projects made before clips even existed. Here it's in the old playlist. And here's in the new playlist. Great, sounds the same. Hey, I didn't promise it would sound good. Anyway, when FL Studio converts block projects, you'll see these lock icons. They come from the right click option, lock to content. It means that each track is locked to a single clip. This makes them behave like the block tracks. If I click down here, each clip track adds the lock content. If I try to select pattern 1 by clicking on it and putting it on the lead 2 track, it won't happen. You can drag clips into other tracks, you just can't click them in. It's possible to use the main selector, click up base 1 and add it to this track since it's not locked. I can then, if I want, lock to content on that. The names of the tracks are taken from the pattern names in the old project. OK, what about starting with a new project? Let's open pattern 1 and put some kicks in it. Now here the F2 shortcut key is your friend. Click it once to open the pattern name window and give your pattern a name. Now before closing the window, press the F2 key again 
and notice the colour selector cycles between colours. You can click and select one from the main selector of course. Rather than playing with the pattern selector, the second important shortcut key is F4. This opens a new pattern with the name window ready to go. I'll name it, press F2 to cycle colours, and we're done. I see the first track is locked to content. For this project, I didn't want that. But it reminds me, you can save a blank project with all the tracks locked to content and proceed that way if you desire. Okay, F4 to create a new pattern. I'll name it Hats. I'm holding control plus the right mouse button to zoom. And here it is so far. When programming percussion, cloning patterns to make variations was easy with the blocks and it's easy with the clips too. Let's clone the hat pattern. Hold shift, left click and drag the pattern to be cloned to a new location. I've put it on a new track but you don't have to. Then left click the clip menu and select make unique. And you're done. Cloned. So now we have hats and hats too. Go in and make your variation. Another left shift and click to drag, make unique and open it to make some variations. An alternative to that is to merge several clips and make your variations in one long pattern. Select them all, go edit, merge similar pattern clips, then open the piano roll and go and make your edits. Finally, if you want the tracks to take on the colour of your clips, right click them and select auto name. The track will then take the name and colour of the clip. Auto Name Children sends the track names and colours back the other way onto the clips. With that artistic hint, we're done. Just remember, press the F4 key to create a new pattern with the name window open, press F2 to cycle through colours, and you'll be working your way with clips in no time.